Hello, I will show you how to, in the correct C++ course, how to do chapter 5. It's called Show Args, and the goal is to show the command line interface arguments. So, um, this is the chapter. When that scroll down, the goal is to display all the command line arguments. And we'll be using the STL only, and we have to understand how the course works. And we need to have written a correct Hello CLI program, which was the previous chapter. This is the exercise, but let's first do the first step. So I'm going to open up the tab how this course works. So first I'll be forking the chapter. Let's fork this chapter. Fork. Second step, clone your fork. Let's do so. So it's still busy. Activate Travis CI. Let's do that. Travis CI.org. Sign in with GitHub. And let's see, perhaps Travis already found this repository in our accounts. There it is. That's already found it. Else you should have clicked Sync Account to synchronize it. So it's activated now. Done. Next step. Oh, let's go back. So we've activated Travis CI now. Now we have to modify the readme. Let's do that. Mouse pad, readme. And we're going to replace official builder break slash cpp underscore by your username. And then get the stuff. My username is correct cpp. And I'm replace all. That's great. And now all the links work well. Next step modify readme. Do the exercise. Do take a look at the exercise. Write a command line interface program that displays all command line arguments separated by spaces and followed by a new line. So if I give it no arguments, it should say its name with a new line. Yep, yep, echo, echo, echo. Or easy. We can do that. Um, you see that there's a dot slash here and there's not a dot slash here. It, it, this just so the name of the program, whatever it is, must just be echoed, like repeated. Uh, there's no string things going on there. All right. Um, let's first download the Qt Creator project file. I like to have that thing uh, because I like to use Qt Creator. The correct CPP. We're in the chapter Show Arcs. We need to save it there. And we see that Arc V. I want to take a look at the code first. This is the mm, project file. You create a project file. Configure the project. Alrighty. Hey, oh, this is useful. So I already get a bit of code. So it always shows the path. Like at arc v. Let's add some documentation. Uh, echo, like repeat all command, all arguments. We have to use the STL, which we are not allowed to use the for loop in this exercise, but you'll see how easy it is. Echo all arguments, we can do that. And the first argument, argv at index 0, is the full path to the executable. Um, so that's already um, displayed if I just run it. I assume it works. So the full path to this, to my main um, program, the, so the program is called main actually. It's a, it's a long long thing, I can't make it bigger, so I'm sorry. But the exercise, let's go back to the exercise. We have to use, you must convert argv to std fact of std string. Um, because argv, let's take a look at argv. Argv is an array of character pointers. It means it is a collection of uh, strings, of raw strings, of words. And that is um, that's the, the C um, the, the proper C style arc uh, C style name to do so the C data type. But we have to convert it to a std vector of std string. Well, the course is very helpful if we click on arc v, and it usually takes us to a page how to do so. And I see that oh this yeah, example convert arc v. Well, that's that's convenient. Let's put it there. So 
I see that this code it converts it creates a vector of st strings called args and then the r count assert is uh, it's an internal check so the argument count arg c means argument count equals the size of that args vector since it's awesome we expect that and that the first arguments are always the same uh, arg v at index 0 is equals args at index 0 so uh, but, uh, so we just need this line and we can read from the asserts that uh, that there's nothing weird going on so I'm going to copy that line here all right, great, we have our arcs. Then we need to, let's go back to the exercise, then we need to use std copy to display the command line arguments with std so yeah, Let's take a look how I'm going to, going to do that. Because we're not allowed to use the for loop, so we'll probably use this, use std copy on all the arguments. Let's take a look at std copy has to say, std copy append cout vector, that looks like it. So I take a look at the code snippet, so it has a vector of a, t, a template type. So it can be any type, including a std string. And what they do, they copy the beginning of the vector called v from the beginning to its end. For all elements, they are going to probably copy it to see out with a new line as a separator. Well, I can just copy this line, this, is, this will be useful copy to my code and I like to put it uh, I like to put the spaces the indentation like this and uh, we are going to copy from the beginning to the end to see out separate by a new line I'm going to remove the for loop oh, there, there, there it goes oh I see that there's a new line at the end let's put keep that thing in use the space as a separator. And we don't copy a V, we copy the arguments. So we are copying from the beginning of all arguments to the end of all arguments the elements to see out separated by a space and then we uh, add a new line. When I run this it gives some complaints. Well it's completely right. It says that the vector is, is unknown to it. Let's include vector. Vector, vector. It says that outstream iterator is unknown. Let's include iterator. It says that template type T was not declared in the scope. That's correct. So T was the element of the vector, which in this case is the string. I'm just going to call it string. Let's see. And this appears to work. It's too small to read, but it just copies the, the argument. The, the path to the executable. If I go to projects, run, and add some command line marks like A, B, C, separate by space, so I have really a lot. If I now run it, then it also echoes those facts. So it's great, I think I've nailed it. Uh, I have done proper documentation. I have been using uh, uh, the C++ data structure like a vector or string which is neat I don't use a for loop, I use an algorithm which is a great idea I don't use end line, I use a new line so I think I've nailed it so I'm going to think I've, I've done the exercise so let's take a look at the next step what should we be doing now so we've done the exercise, well done push the code, alright let's do so, let's push that code get as minus all up, get commit minus m done exercise Let's take a look at our GitHub of the exercise and refresh it here. So I expect that these buttons will turn gray. They do. I can um, take a look at what Travis is doing. And so Travis, it hasn't found any builds for that repository yet, which is correct because none have finished yet. But in the build history, we can see that it's now starting to do its work. This will take some minutes, so uh, I won't bother you by talking all the time and I will just uh, pause for a couple of minutes myself, so see you in a second. Hello, Travis has done finished correcting the exercise, so just for some curiosity let's take a, let's take a look at its build log. 
It looks tassel pass, CP checks passes, OCLint passes, documentation is there, code coverage is measured, and our build existed with zero, which means I've done this correctly. And let's take a look at the GitHub. If we refresh, then we see, ooh, there's no, no, it's still gray. Perhaps we need to refresh it again. There it is, it's green now. So uh, this means I've done the exercise correctly.